What's up fellas, Mark Kuckerberg here, Master of Jiu Jitsu, back for another video. Today we are going to be summarizing up replication in hopefully 10 minutes or less so I can make a nice little title and clickbait you guys. So let's go ahead and get into it because I am wasting time. Alrighty, the iPad is out, I'm ready to go. Someone in my comments recently asked me if I could make this video, and guess what? I was already planning on doing it anyway, so I asked them if they wanted to make out. Still haven't heard back yet, let's see how that goes for me. So anyways, let's conclude replication. What is the point of replication? Well, if we go here over to the draw tab and I get out my little marker, the point is now that instead of having one database, we have a bunch of them, right? We are no longer just reading or writing to necessarily one place, but we could be potentially reading from many places, we could potentially be writing to many places. So what does this afford us? Firstly, and most importantly, it affords us durability. If I go ahead and nuke this data center right here, we've still got many other databases left to read from and write to. Of course, we also have throughput. Instead of just having to write to one place, if I have many clients who are all writing to the same database node, guess what? The next thing they can do is start writing to different database nodes. And what that means is that you've spread out the throughput you can effectively make your whole system faster and perform more writes without giving users a hard time. And lastly, of course, this is really good if you have a geography of many users. You know, we've got some Indian guys, some Australian guys, and they can all write to their own special data center. And so, of course, that is going to speed things up as well. So let's move on to some types of single leader replication that we covered, the pros and cons of them, and then we're gonna conclude this thing. So first off, we have single leader replication. So the point is here that of course we've got a master and the rest of them are going to be followers, slaves, whatever you wanna call it. This guy could also be a leader because it's 2023. Um, so the point is all writes go to that master, all reads can come from any of the nodes and typically this will be eventually consistent. If it isn't eventually consistent, it means that pretty much you're writing to all of the nodes at the same time before a write technically goes through and that will take forever. So it's very impractical. This is probably eventually consistent. So what are the pros and cons of this type of setup? Well, the biggest pro, of course, is that there's no write conflicts because you're only writing to one single leader. On the other hand, when you only write to one leader, it means that you now have a single point of failure in your system, aka the leader. A follower can go down and, you know, whatever. You can just set up another follower and start sending writes to it. But at the same time, if your leader goes down, then you're really in trouble because who do you write to? You can designate one of the followers to become a leader, but now you're running the risk of something like split brain where you're writing to multiple places. At the same time, there are certain distributed consensus mechanisms that do solve this problem, but that is a topic for a subsequent video. And of course, in addition to that, by virtue of also having one single leader, we have low write throughput. In general, if we're all writing to the same node, it means that all the writes have to go through one single bottleneck. Let's go ahead now and move on to multi-leader replication. So you've got my beautifully drawn picture over here of a bunch of nodes in harmony. And basically the point is they're all sending writes to and from one another. It's complete chaos. The beauty of that is if I have many people writing, they can write to any single one of these nodes and they can also read from any single one of these nodes. So what does that mean? It means that we have high write throughput. This is a really, really useful setup if we have many users in many different geographic areas because now we can each write to our own data center. At the same time, we also now have to deal with write conflicts. So I made a whole video devoted to write conflicts and why they suck and how they're hard to deal with. The point is you can't just use a timestamp to decide which write was later because clocks are bad, they're unreliable, and there's clock drift. So again, they're not that useful. What can you do instead? You could use something like version vectors in order to detect whenever we have a concurrent write. And whenever we have a concurrent write, we basically have two options. One option is to store both of those concurrent writes, which is known as storing siblings. And then eventually some other user can come along and basically check those out and say, okay, here's the one that this value should actually be. And the other option is to use something like a CRDT, where a CRDT effectively is the database merging those writes for you. Obviously, this doesn't work in every situation, but there are some data structures that you can easily represent with a CRDT, like a counter or a set or things like that. And then, of course, finally, we have the most cracked of all of these leaderless replication. So in a leaderless replication, instead of just writing to one node at a time, we can write to many nodes at a time. And the main thing to know about leaderless replication is the concept of a quorum. So in this case, I've got three database nodes. So that means that n is going to be three. 
And now if every single time that I write to my setup, I'm able to write to two nodes, and every single time that I, oh my God, what was I writing there? And every single time that I read from my setup, I'm going to read from two nodes. It means that we're guaranteed to see at least one node with the most up-to-date write every single time that we perform a write and a read, right? Because if I write to two nodes, and then I read from two nodes, we're going to have at least one node in overlap. And then this guy over here can pick the write with the highest version number. And so by picking the write with the highest version number for a given key, you know, he might see Jordan is a 10 out of 10 on one with a version number of, you know, let's say 26. And then Jordan might also be from the other node, a six out of 10. Oh, I stopped writing for some reason. A six out of 10 with a version number of 25. It means that the one where I'm a 10 out of 10 wins because that's version number 26. So that is kind of the gist between leaderless replication. And in the background, these things stay consistent with one another via read repair, which is basically the most up to database, the most up to date database correcting the other databases. And then there's also anti entropy in the background. And that's basically the database sending each other their changes, oftentimes through a data structure like Merkle trees, and that's just a process that happens asynchronously in the background. So what are the pros and cons of a setup like this? Well, the main pros are that we have relatively high write throughput. Why is that? Even though we have to write to many nodes at once, which obviously is going to bottleneck us, it would be a lot quicker if we could just write to one and say, okay, we're good. It is the case that uh, we now get to write to many nodes instead of just one place. And so instead of having one single bottleneck, we can distribute these writes amongst many nodes and we're in better shape for doing those. So probably a lower write throughput than something like a multi-leader replication, but a higher write throughput than single leader replication, at least in theory. And then of course we also have quorum reads and writes. So that's what I mentioned, which is that we can almost guarantee the correctness of our system when we use quorums where basically the number of nodes that you write to and read from have to be greater than the number of total nodes in your system. Then on the other hand, we also have low read throughput. Why is that? Well, for starters, you're now reading from a bunch of different places. So if you have to read from say five different places instead of reading from one different place, it's going to take a lot longer to ensure that you are going to get all of that data. You can read in parallel, but it's likely that one of those nodes might be a little bit slow, and then that's gonna slow things down. Additionally, you also still have to deal with write conflicts. It's very, very possible that you know, I could be writing here, writing to the same exact nodes as this first guy, and it's the case that this write is going to win on the middle node, but this write is going to win on the top node. So again, write conflicts still very possible in a leaderless replication setup, and it is because of things like write conflicts that quorum reads and writes are not perfect, right? They're very good, but there are still times where they fail. They can also fail due to things like sloppy quorums, which I mentioned in the leaderless replication video, and they can also fail due to basically just having a write that only partially goes through, but it doesn't hit a quorum write threshold. Okay, so that is pretty much going to conclude this video, guys. I hope this summarizes things very concisely. Obviously, I did breeze through things on purpose, and part of that is because I just spent the last like 10 videos explaining all of them. So if there is a part of this one that you don't fully understand, or you say, oh, he really breezed through that, I highly, highly recommend just going back and watching the entire video for that replication schema. Anyways, guys, I hope you have a great weekend. I will try and do the same. If the Knicks lose tonight, I will not have a great weekend. And uh, yeah, I'll take it from there. So see you guys in the next one.